Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with my third video using this Happy Hello stamp set. This is the set that comes in the Simon Says Stamp March 2023 card kit. I did a video unboxing the kit and making some cards and then I did another video, was it last week? Yeah, last week, <laughs> um, using the stamp set and then the die set just arrived and I was like, oh, perfect, because I had more ideas. So I started off with just some ivory cardstock and I trimmed a couple pieces down and I'm going to use the largest of the nested round hearts wafer die set. I've used this die set in several videos so far and this die coordinates with um, the Happy Hello stamp set. And then I pulled out some my little set of Concord and Ninth ink cubes because there's several inks in their line that just went perfectly with the pattern papers that also come in the kit. I will have a link to everything separately though. Um, this is the Simple Stories Wildflower pattern paper that I like raved about in um, the unboxing and I went on a whole tangent about like how I want to like get wallpaper and you know do my powder room someday <laughs> if wallpaper wasn't such a pain to uh, anyway anyway getting sidetracked again got the inks have my little plan so I put the large the largest of the nested round hearts wafer die on this piece of cardstock my plan was to use these flower images because the last video I did I used the big like folk arty style heart image and I hadn't used these flower images yet and I, I literally have like 20 different ideas for them so figured out how I wanted to do what I was doing and I laid out just the stems and I've put this in my misty I've got my you know wafer die there just to give me a visual of wh what's going to get cut off and then I'm going to just start inking things and stamping them. So like I said, I'm using these little Concord and Ninth cubes. I'll have a link to the set and then I'll link to the individual ones because you can get them in cubes or full size ink pads. I do want to get these in the full size. I just at the moment, I'm not sure where I would put them <laughs> as always. And yeah, I just haven't got around to it, but I like them. They're they're similar to they're, they're they're the same type of ink pad as Simon's positively saturated inks. Formula wise, I'm not sure if they're the same because you know companies all have their own thing going on, but they are similar at the very least, and they they smooth out as they dry and all the fun things. And you know, more colors is always better in my opinion. So I stamped the stems, and then with the actual flowers, I decided to just put them on acrylic blocks. Just easier just because and inking those up with more of the colors and I decided to do two cards because there were two of the pattern papers that you know come in the kit that had the little like butterfly moth creatures on them and there was like kind of a pink pattern there's a blue pattern so I was like oh perfect I'll do one in pinks one in blues why not <laughs> similar to my last video where I did uh like a pink theme card and a blue theme card obviously I just it's a trend I am going through at the moment so stamped the individual blooms with uh these inks and my just my little acrylic blocks and yeah as these dry they smooth out so they'll look a little blotchy when they're still wet but pretty much all inks kind of do at least any good you know dye based inks let them dry you know, if it's really bugging you, just make sure they're actually dry because they do. They all just kind of like smooth out and they don't look so blotchy and all that kind of stuff. So after I had um, stamped and I did like the pinks always last, especially like this deep. This is cranberry. Yeah, this is cranberry. Again, any deep red colors because red pigments, red dyes, they stain your stamps. It's fine. I know it bugs people. You get used to it after a while. Again, talked about this in my last video and my, my favorite stamp set of all time that like the stamp itself is pretty much dyed black at this point. They stamp better. The more they get stained, the more you use them, the better they stamp. So that was also why you saw me earlier like rubbing the stamps with my fingers when they're brand new. There's usually a coating on f good quality photopolymer stamps. Rub them with your fingers. You can use a white eraser. Ink them up multiple times. Stamp them on scrap paper multiple times. The more you use them, the better they take and stamp. Take the ink and stamp. So, 
I'm going to add some splatter, of course. So I pulled out my fancy fine tech palette that, you know, I hoard and pet because it's just, it's beautiful. These are beautiful, but any metallic watercolors, really anything will work for splatter. Um, I just pulled this out because it's pretty and it had colors that were perfect for this. So when it comes to metallic watercolors, whether it's the fine tech or the Gonzai Tombi that I use a lot with metallic ones, you add some water, let it sit for a bit or work it up really well with your brush. Um, cause you just, you got to work at it to get that pigment to mix properly with the water so that it actually shows up. So if your metallic watercolors are looking really um, literally watered out, you know, you're not getting much color, work it up a little bit more. So I did on the heart with the blue flowers, of course I did some blue splatter and some gold, gold on both, Can never have too much. So did that in my splat box with my little fan brush and then the heart with the pink flowers, I did the I think this one they actually call the fine tech calls it purple. It's like a it's more of a pinky color in my opinion, but they call it purple. So added that, set those aside to dry, and then I trimmed down these pattern papers that I wanted to use for these cards. I also trimmed down um, a couple pieces of Concord and Ninth cardstock just to frame these pieces, and then I also roughed up the edges of the pattern paper because. Why not? I don't know. It's funny how I'll go back and forth with um, things I used to do all the time. You know, like I used to always use like pretty much every single card had pattern paper. Every single card had ribbon, eyelets, brads. Eyelets and brads I haven't used in, I cannot even remember how long. Ribbon, not so much. I'm going to use some twine on these cards though. Pattern paper. I generally use pattern paper at least once a month, mostly because it comes in the kits, which, you know, encourages me to use it. So anyway, anyway, just walk down memory lane. But literally, when was the last time you used an eyelet? Some of you might not even know what that is. Like, I legit cannot remember the last time. I'm, I'm just trying to think. It has been years. I couldn't even tell. Like, I probably have some in a container somewhere in the bottom of a storage bin. Goodness knows where, you know. Anyway. <laughs> Now my brain is like, hmm, when, where, how? Anywho, anywho, I roughed out the edges of the pattern paper just because it gives a little extra. And then I pulled out twine. I have this monster roll of uh, May Arts twine. This is the, I think, natural color because there's natural and ivory. I have both. It just depends on what I'm, you know, what look I'm going for. So I wrapped it around the card front there and just taped the ends into place with washi tape. Once those are taped in place, I then take separate pieces of the twine and I tripled it up because this stuff's pretty thin and I wanted the little bow to have a little bit more substance to it. And then I just kind of threaded that through a couple pieces of the twine that were wrapped around and then kind of mostly did bunny ears, tied it in a knot. This way also I can shift the bow more to the side depending on where the hearts are gonna go. And those hearts are die cut from um, just darker card stocks. And that scallop part is part of the coordinating wafer die set for that happy hello stamp set. And I love it. I was so excited when the die set got here because I was like, yay, I can use this. I don't know what it is. I'm like on this. I'm just obsessed lately with like scalloped wafer dies. These have been like scalloped wafer dies in general have also been around for a very long time. But I don't know that just in the last couple months, I've just been in this phase that I keep wanting to reach for scallop wafer dies. I don't know, but they're cute and they're fun. And they add in a little extra something. So I'll get back to that in a second. So after I added my bows, I was originally going to like white heat emboss a sentiment, like one of the like sentiments that are all on one line, etc. And then I changed my mind last minute and decided just to use this little thank you sentiment from that stamp set. I'm going to just stamp it directly onto these hearts with the darkest color of ink. So with the blue ones, it's the midnight so like a navy color and then with the red one it's that cranberry color so ink that up on my little acrylic block stamp that right onto each of these hearts and then I can adhere these to that scalloped die cut so you can see how the scalloped heart like it's shaped to go with these or to coordinate with the nested around hearts wafer die but it will also die cut that folk art style image from the stamp set so again just more options I'm a fan of all the options the more the better so I adhered those to those scalloped heart die cuts 
And then my card bases are going to be more of that ivory cardstock. So I just took a sheet of that and cut it in half. So these right now are like five and a half by eight and a half inches. So I'll score it at four and a quarter. So these will be top folding um, landscape A2 cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. So I scored those with my little Teflon bone folder and my score buddy. And then um, on the inside of each of these, I decided to add another strip of that same pattern paper. So just trim that down with my um, guillotine paper trimmer. So one for each of the cards. And then um, I put one of the stems and another one of the blooms back on my little acrylic block and decided to just add just add one little flower to the inside. You know, just a little finishing something. I was going to stamp another sentiment and decided to kind of leave it. Just leave it as is. Still gives plenty of space to write to the recipient. So I'll have the pattern paper and then the little stamped flower and we'll be good to go with that. So I used the pattern paper to kind of give me a visual to where to stamp this uh, little stem. So it's kind of, you know, right at the pattern paper there. So it's got those stamped on the inside. And then I can adhere the strip of pattern paper to the inside of the card. And then whatever's left hanging over, I can just flip over the card base, trim that off with my scissors. So it was just easier doing that than the amount of times, you know, you trim it down with your paper trimmer and you're just, just off by a sliver. Most of the time, it doesn't matter, but it bugs me, you know? <laughs> I always say perfection is definitely overrated. Things do not need to be perfect, all the things. But, yeah, when there's an easy way that doesn't cause, you know, a ton of issues or, you know, takes 10 million extra steps, like leaving the pattern paper, uh, you know, half inch longer, great. So, all that was adhered to the inside. I then adhered the pattern paper panels to the card bases. Again, just some craft tacky glue and I just held that down um, because this twine is thin enough that I didn't feel the need. A lot of times if it's thicker, like a ribbon or just a thicker, you know, baker's twine, that sort of a thing, I'll generally use like the Big Mama foam tape to adhere because it gives um, just enough. And that's what I'm doing here with um, the hearts as I just put a little bit of Big Mama foam tape above and below where the twine is. So it just gives it that tiny little bit of dimension, but also just, you know, gives that little bit of leeway for the twine so that it's not a weird, you know, lumpy, bumpy spot. And once I get that adhered, that finishes off these cards. I decided not to add any other bling or anything because I've got, you know, pattern paper and twine and splatter and all the fun things. And that was just enough, I think. So once I get those adhered into place, these cards are complete. I tried to kind of show the, the shine from the splatter at the end here. My camera was just not picking up. I probably should have turned the flashlight on my phone so you guys could have seen it better, but it's, it's there. It's just pretty. It's subtle, but it's there. So I'll link to the other two videos I did so far using the stamp set. And of course, as always, I'll have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have links to all the supplies I used. All that info will be in the description box directly below the video for anyone who is interested. As always, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. It really helps. It genuinely makes a difference because it drives engagement, tells the robot overlords you guys like what you're seeing, you know, enables me to do my job. And subscribe if you haven't, I'd appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.